The ultimate football fan is now here. Yeah! All the biggest fan channels in one place. Flex Night Stand. 100% Chelsea. Arsenal Fan TV. All about the fans. Why is he on the fucking pitch? What the what? Exclusive content only here. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the UFF Daily Football Show. The number one source, everything going on in the football world daily. UFF, do what you have to do. Hello and welcome to Fan Park Live head-to-head -head debate challenge. We're back again, full studio tonight in association with history. Remember the hashtag, it's down below in the descriptions, history of football from the 28th of May. So from Monday and there's going to be 24-7 um, films, documentary, an absolute footballing bonanza, huge televised event on history. Whether you've got that on Sky, Virgin or Freeview, make sure you check all the information out down below. These are sort of preludes to it. And it's World Cup season. It's World Cup fever. And we're debating it now. We want to hear from you on 0203 606 0315. We're also going to talk to Ty. We're going to talk to Claude. And of course, our main man, Chris, is here as well to debate. Big question tonight. Which of the two, France in 1998 or England in 1966, which of the two performed the best as a host nation? Which of the two performed the best as a, as a host nation? If you check out the Ultimate Football Fan Twitter page, there's a poll currently going out on there. France are leading that race as it stands right now. Um, we want your views, your opinions, and we're going to jump straight into it with these gentlemen here. I'm going to go to Chris first. And say, look, we, we all know we've watched Chris enough. Chris is a French gentleman. He may not sound it, but he's definitely French. He definitely. spoke French to us a moment ago. <laughs> so maybe maybe we know what he's going to go with here. But from your point of view, 98 versus 66, which of the two host nations performed the best? I mean, the thing is, the impression I get, I'm not old enough. I wasn't around to obviously see what England done all those years ago. But the impression I get from that victory is it doesn't really get a lot of credence outside of England. I don't see other international uh, players or other countries or whoever speak about um, that World Cup or that England team during that World Cup with a lot of fondness. That doesn't mean you should take anything away from it, but it doesn't really go beyond that. Whilst the French team and how they've done competitively, as well as what that victory meant in terms of the French society, in terms of how international teams look like, like, um, you know, the, the we used to say Le Blanc, Le Noir et Le Beur, you know, the, the French the, the French players had obviously black players, white French players and also Arabic, North African players. And that was a big thing. So not only on the pitch was that really impactful, but also socially it was very impactful. So for that reason, that's why, you know, bias aside, I consider that to be a greater victory in terms of what we've done in 1998. Well, I disagree on that. Do you mind? Well, yeah, go on. So what, what, because they're not really all French, are they? They're all from different nations, aren't they? <laughs> it's early. It's early. No, 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 yeah, yeah, North yeah. African players, and American yeah. players, Algerian players. Exactly, they're not fr actually French, are they? They could have been. They should be playing for their own country. They should be like Zidane should be playing for Algeria, shouldn't he? Vieira should be playing for Senegal. I mean, we're not at this right. part of the debate. I'll definitely, I right. definitely got a rebuttal for you. Right. Yeah, that was right. a where's, no, no, I'm where's England? It's four England players. There's not but one. Is it though? Is it? There's is not it? one player that you could say is outside of the Eng England nation. Well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, you, you got you got Algerian, you got um, Senegal. What's uh, the rubber of other nations, isn't it? So how many how many of them French players are actually French born? <laughs> Let me ask you this: So you supported England during World Cup 98, right? You support England, I'm assuming. No, 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 no. You no. didn't. So you, I, do, you don't support I, England. I, I, I support the country of my my parents' birth. Okay, no. So I'm interested. So, which, so what's that? Italy. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So, would you say you're English, right, Terry? I know. Yeah, yeah I, I'm 100. Yeah. percent Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. right. So you supported England. I'm assuming in '98, 2002, yep. 2006. Every every year. Right. So I'll tell you what. Rio Ferdinand and Sol Campbell made it in the teams of the year in in that particular tournament, right? Mm. I could easily say, well, by your logic, are they English? They're born here, weren't they? But that's by his logic. I'm not. Right. I'm, I'm not agreeing. Or but, at the same, but at the same time, that's the case for Thierry Henry, no. Zidane, 
Makalele, mm-hmm. all of those players, they are born we're in France. We're talking about yep. 1966, aren't we? No, but we're against 1998. Yeah, exactly. But every single one, I think, in the England uh, team there was uh, fully from that country. Listen, I hear that for sure. I understand what you're saying, but is it okay? Is it a case of being born there, but also having your football education in that country? Because Mm. it's very different if, so Marcel Desai, for example, his background is Ghanaian. Yeah. But his football education didn't come from Ghana. His football Mm. education comes from France. Yeah. And that's mm. the case for Zidane. Mm. That's the case for Thierry Henry, Trezeguet, Chukayev. I point. I suppose mm. you have so, got a point. Okay. And as an Italian, yeah, you got, you and as an Italian, as an Italian, you, you 2006, got... tell me where Cameroonese is from. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. You got me. You got me. Actually, on Campbell, actually on Campbell and Ferdinand, you have got a very good point. But then... Okay, look, look, we're, we're going to move, move this on a little bit. We're, we're but we're not on. talking no, about no, whether they're entitled no, no, no. to play. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm just going let's on move the point. Oh, let's yeah. move the point on to keep the show going. So, Ty, yeah. which of the two, England in 1966 or France in 1998, which of the two, and this is this is the point we're making here, we've got we to go away from it, who should or shouldn't be playing, mm. which host nation performed the best for you? Well, I think it's probably France. Why, in your opinion? In my opinion, because... When it came down to it, they beat the best, arguably the best ever footballing nation at a world level. My guy, my guy. In, thank you, in Brazil. You know, because to beat Brazil in any game is amazing, but to beat them in the final in France is incredible. And the funny thing is, you're talking about um, the World Cup. No word of a lie, I was actually, how can I put it? Because I always say this. I was humbled, I was honoured, I was privileged and I was very blessed to actually be there at the World Cup. I went to support Nigeria and it was it was absolutely incredible. It's, it's, it's on a scale different from any game or any tournament you've ever been. Talking about Champions League, Champions League final, Europa League, Premier League. It was absolutely incredible. And the thing is, France, I don't know, is um, you, what do they, what, what is said that? Is positive energy can really help. I remember when Nigeria were there, the France fans were su- supporting us, and look what happened. They went, yeah, it was a, it was a yeah, but that, but that's the same. In, in in with all due respect to that, I was talking to somebody today that's going yeah. to Russia, and that's yeah. the same as far as I can tell, and and what I've read about the history of World Cups, yeah. that's the same at the majority of World Cups. You will get people from. That the host nation, whether it be South Africa, whether it be Russia, come up, they will go to games that their country is not involved in, and those games tend to have a much more. If those are smaller nations that don't sell out their allocation, mm. they'll always tend to be a really nice um, party atmosphere because there isn't that rivalry going on. No, yeah. no one. Yeah, there isn't true. that. You know, you get. It's like a, like a like a, not a preseason game. So that's a little bit disrespectful. But you get that sort of party. Atmosphere. I've got a friend who's got tickets to go and watch Iran play. Spain. Spain potentially, yeah. okay. and that will that will be an amazing party atmosphere. You get lots of Spanish there, and then you'll get yeah. the rest of the crowd to be neutral, not caring who wins. So I think I think you get that, which I understand. Well, yeah, but what... so but in terms of, I, I get your point. Let's go back to your point, though. I want to ask you this question. Yeah. So yes, France beat Brazil. Brazil yeah, yeah. Um, controversy around that in terms of Absolutely. why no, but why Ronaldo was still on the yeah, football exactly. pitch. Yes. The, the and and a lot of that stems back to the, uh, there's a lot of speculation. The reason they had to play him even though he felt ill uh, and, was... and and had a seizure was because of a major sponsorship Sponsor, deal between yeah, yeah, Nike yeah, yeah. and yeah, Nike. Yeah. And look, if he'd have played and he was fully fit, or if he didn't have, he didn't start and they had somebody else that came into the fray, maybe the result could have been different. But, yeah, but because... if you look at what, if you look at who England had to beat in 1966, yeah. I mean, got, you look at the they literally. So to the Ronaldo point, just a quick. Word. I don't know if um, there's a documentary, I'm not going to do a free plug, but there's a Ronaldo documentary <laughs> and where he actually talks about it, members of the Brazil squad from that year talk yeah, about it. Yeah. The way it went down, there were, so literally, you see him talking, this is what they say, so he woke up that morning, had a crazy fit or whatever, the reasons behind that for me have always been fishy and that's me as a France fan, like as a Frenchman saying that, yeah. for me it's still very controversial. Yeah. They, the, the, the squad, uh, sorry, the, the, the coaching staff didn't want him to play, they said you're not playing. Even when they had to announce the lineups, he wasn't, he wasn't in the in stars. Yeah, he wasn't in it. That, yeah. He yeah. was the one who pushed for it. He was the one who said, listen, I'm fine to play. Because after that, yeah. after that seizure, he said, I'm fine. They did tests on him. He was all good. Mm. The coach staff didn't want to play him. Now, it, they're very, very, they, there may be that commercial kind of pressure to be like, listen, mm-hmm. Nike, massive campaign. I remember that was the whole airport advert. Like There was a big thing on Brazil being that team. Yeah. So that may have played a part. But ultimately, Ronaldo wanted to make that decision. Yeah, but yeah. wasn't wasn't there a uh, 
that it was pulled out and then, then put back into the side about yeah. 15, 20 minutes to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was, was off, off, yeah, Chris is saying yeah. off his own back. Some look, Chris, either Chris way, is. like if he's made that decision, the, the, the coaching staff should have still, um, for me, should have absolutely not. They, they have the final say. However, for me, France was still going to win anyway. Like France that year in 1998, well, they, they were yeah. just, it wasn't, yeah, they're, they're at home and the atmosphere was yeah. there. And of course, uh, Chris picked up, I was reading earlier an article about the uh, the legacy and, and the big part of the legacy for France. Uh, forget the stadium and, 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 and sort of youngsters getting into football. A big part yeah. of the legacy was to bring the, the country closer together on a multicultural basis. Yeah. It did help improve things. It, it had a slight regression afterwards and I think something like 36% of, oh, yeah, of, of the public yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Sort of the, said that they don't even yeah. they don't count it because non-French people won it. But that's but then but then the right. idea that the, the, the need for France to, to host that World Cup and to do it, I think it it helped some people definitely, yeah. and I think mm. it had, had a massive impact. But that French team were absolutely listen. Even but the, only the final, they had the difficult ups. So all the whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, this is how exactly oh, went down. Gone. Group stage, you have a point. Group stage weren't particularly difficult. Past Paraguay, we faced Italy. You would know, and we only we only just about beat them on penalties. Yeah, we yeah. faced Paraguay, we which had to beat them again, golden goal. Croatia, who had a very strong team at that point, Davo mm -hmm. Suke was the top goal scorer in that tournament. Davo, the legend, right? We it took a right back to score two goals to beat them, yeah. and then we faced the reigning champs. And our, that ninety eight team was arguably better than the ninety four team in terms of the Brazil. If you look at that Brazil team, mm. you've got Catherine Roberto Carlos either side, you've got Tafarel World Cup winner, mm. you've got Dunga, you've got Rivaldo and Ronaldo. And the Nilsson Cup, like, the Nilsson. they were just, Fantastic. they just had star players. Even if you don't start with um, Ronaldo, mm. you still got star players from back to front. Mm. So, for me, the knockout stage is going forward. Yeah, I get that. We've got um, some videos we're going to play now for you. Then we're going to take some calls from people out there. And then we're going to touch a little bit more on the, the England 66 team and talk about why some of you may think uh, that deserves a little shout. So, you ready with the video, Jay? Right, we're going to get that on for you guys right now. Yes. England 96. We've seen the highlights. We've seen the replays. They did. They didn't win that final. They got lucky. They were a good team, but they got lucky. That ball did not cross the line. And if there was VAR or goal line technology back then, then it it would have or could have been a very very different situation. But it is what it is. But let's go back to the semi final against um Portugal when Eusebio was just on a mad thing in that tournament. Nobody could stop him. And I, if, I'm, if I'm correct, they had all these issues with travel and accommodation. And the man went into the final on just not in the, in the, in the fittest state that he should have been. A lot, of, a lot of dodgy things happened in that home tournament to enable England to win that World Cup. France, one could say the same thing. Um, they had a good tournament, obviously getting to the final. But as, I, as I've said, this was Ronaldo's tournament. He was dominating every defender, anyone who came in his path. No goalkeeper was safe. The night before the final, he's got this mystery illness. Seizures, this, that, whatever. He One minute he's playing, then he's not playing, then he's actually playing. And if you watch that final, he wasn't really playing. He was just on the pitch. Something dodgy happened there as well. And I don't think it's no coincidence that it, France, who were the whole nation, won it. And they battered Brazil in that final. Brazil were not there to be battered. That, I, I don't trust that win. And I don't trust the 1966 win. And for that reason, it's a tie. Going on winning wise, 66 in it, but I, I think we did all right for 98. France, 98. What's that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Why is that? Because yeah, England were too biased, weren't they? <laughs> England 96. Thank you very much. All those videos there taken by us. Some from around the grounds over the last few weeks and some people sending them. And remember, you can always send videos in to Fan Park Live via our Dropbox uh, link in the description uh, below. I believe we have a couple of phone calls ready, uh, Jay. Is that right? Well, I'm going to put some phone calls through now and see what people have got to say on this matter. Hello, welcome to Fan Park Live. What's your name? My name's Adam. Hello, Adam. Hello, Adam. Welcome, welcome. Who do you support? Um, I'm actually French. Uh, je suis français. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. Good, good. So I, I assume by you being French, you're gonna you're gonna say France '98. Uh, yeah, of course I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so why what should, why are they why were they a better performing team than the England 1966 side? 
I think different sports that they have like world class players and like a world renowned level. If you look at England players like uh, I don't know George Hurst and Bobby Charlton. Jeff Hurst. Jeff um, Hurst. Yeah, so Jeff Hurst. Sorry. Um, yeah. uh, I don't think they had a, as much competition as the likes of Zidane, Henri. Mm. Uh, what, 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 what do you mean? Uh, not much competition. Yeah, Jimmy Greaves couldn't even get in the fight, in the team. We've got injured. Jimmy Gre- Jimmy Greaves' goal scoring record has only just been beaten by Cristiano Ronaldo. He could <laughs> he couldn't get into the the, 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 the final lineup. I mean, don't get me wrong, England's 98 team, uh, 90, uh, 66 team was amazing as well. I just think that that France team had something special. Um, Do you yeah. think Bobby Charlton yeah. was world class? Or Bobby Moore? Or Bobby Moore? Yeah, they were what, about, what about Gordon Banks? Best keeper That's in the good. world. One of the best keepers of all time. He was probably better than, he was way better than Barthez. But I, I just think France had that special panache in their team. How uh, many of the uh, games from 1966 have you watched? Only the final, to be honest. Only the final. So it's, it's quite difficult to give an assumption if you haven't watched all the games of France and all the games of England in 66. Yeah, I suppose you're right, yeah. I'm only, I'm only pulling your leg, like you got your view and your opinion. I'm just putting it out there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm using that as an example because I've seen a lot of comments on the Twitter feed and on YouTube tonight saying, well, how can I judge it? I've, I've, I've never had the opportunity to watch the 66 World Cup games. I think, and this is what I say, especially I'm saying this to you if you're English. If you're not English, I would understand why you wouldn't do it. But we mm. can go back and you can watch historic games of football. I think often in life people look at what's going on now or in recent times and mm. they don't go back and watch yeah. it. And I think it's well worth doing because you'll realise actually that a lot of things you might see from Pep or Klopp so a lot of these things ain't new. They're, they've been around a long time. They're just sort of reinvented. Um, anyone got any questions for the caller? Um, not really. He's on my side, so I'm, I'm right. <laughs> I'm right mate, for, sure. thank you very much for your call. We yeah. appreciate it, Adam. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Au revoir. Yeah, thank you. That's in. I mean, you got Gordon, Gordon Banks is the best keeper in the world at the time, wasn't he? I'd I mean? flip what he said, to be fair. I'd flip what he said because I think, yeah, England did have legendary players on that side right so you've got Gordon Banks you've got Bobby Charlton you've got Bobby Moore, Moore you've got mm. Styles is it Nobby yeah. Styles? Yeah, Styles Jimmy, Styles, Jimmy yeah. Greaves you Jimmy Greaves because you got injured you've got Jeff Hurst as well but yeah. the way I'd flip that point it isn't so much about who they had in, on the respective teams it's who was the world class players around that tournament so obviously mm. you had Eusebio Eusebio actually scored nine goals in that Brazil. tournament Brazil Brazil Not with Pele obviously with Pele pieces, but in yeah, my did, opinion yeah. that France 98 tournament Probably in modern history, probably had the most amount of world class teams and most amount of world class players. Take France out of the picture, I take Brazil out of the picture for a second, right? That England team was pretty stacked if you actually think about it. That England team to this day still gets a lot of praise. It's probably still our best England side ever. Like, like we have, we've never created a better hold team. On. What would you say world class when you say world class? I'm talking just top players and top teams. So, no, no, in, 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 cool. in we've got some more callers that will get through on here. We'll, we'll, we'll touch it in a second. Jay, you put those through for us. It's very easy. No, form, but anyway. Hello, hey, welcome mate. to Fan Park Live. What's you your name? Right? Hey, it's Jackson, mate. Hello, right. Jackson. Who do you support? How's it going? Very well. It's England. England. So, uh, who, who are you siding with here? France 98 or England 66? Well, to be honest with you, I just want to ask a quick question. Because um, I've been on a few talk shows with Claude. <laughs> um, this is a good one. Not, not, not even on talk show. Claude, you've said to me, yeah, out of your own mouth, that you are uh, you are one of the biggest England fans of all time. So what are you what? talking about? What? What did I say? <laughs> when have I said that? <laughs> are you having a laugh? <laughs> when have I said that? <laughs> Claude has <laughs> been absolutely found I'm out. De- I'm defending England tonight, but I've never said I'm a big England fan. You've got to be joking. <laughs> no, listen. It, even the fact that you're saying that you're not an England fan, it's embarrassing. Why, In what, what way? What uh, way? Why? Because we're all English, are we not? I've got Irish descent. My parents, my parents are yeah, Italian. I, uh, my I, parents are Irish. Hey? From England. We should be supporting our team, England. Well, no, no, know, because we're, we're no, because we we are. Uh, my blood is Italian, isn't it? Yeah. I was born from. My two... blood's Irish, but we're still England together. But you've even said to me before that you was you you are a big England fan. Never, but never, mate. mate. Listen, I will tell you what, mate. I will tell you what I think about. I tell you what, I won't even bother. Just I, I like when even... you said, just like when you said that Wobie was going to be one of the biggest England internationals of all time. Bro. No, no, he's Nigerian, by the way. Yeah, for, yeah, through choice, not because hey? he couldn't get an England team. No, because he's no, Nigerian. No, no, no. no. <laughs> 
No, he told us no, he's no, Nigerian. No, 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 he's, no, he, no, he's, he's, no, he's he Nigerian. Told, nothing he said. No, he chose Nigerian. Wrong, wrong. It's just his opinion. No, he Mate, both his parents are really Nigerian. Really appreciate. No, gentlemen, gentlemen, very, very, very much appreciate. Where was he born? Where was he born? Where was he born? Do you know? You he's, guys Nigeria. Guys he's, he's Nigeria. He's born in Nigeria. No, he's born in Nigeria. I'm checking on the internet now. How do you spell Wobi? He's born in the I W O B I. He was born in Nigeria. Now you got Ty riled up, bro. Like no, 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 no. He was born. He was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Absolutely. On May May the third, 1996. So he's always gonna pay for Nigeria. To be fair, he was always gonna pay for Nigeria because his his uncle is the greatest Nigerian player of all time. But, that too. but do you think? Do you think, <laughs> but, mate? Really appreciate your call. Thank you very much. But, but on that call. side note, do you like? You know, you, you, look, we had um, we were talking about, about kits the other <laughs> night, and yeah. people were praising up that really good Jamaica side from '98. It was a good Jamaica yeah. side. It was a good but Jamaica some, side and a good Jamaica manager. But sometimes I, I look at some of the players who are born here, whose yeah. parents yeah. may may have, may have Italian blood or may have yeah. uh, Jamaican heritage, yeah. and I sometimes I do sometimes think if you were good enough, you would have chosen England. I think some people they, they choose maybe a grandparents nation. You get the, a lot of the Irish players do it. You know they, they kind of pick Ireland because their nan was Irish. But it's only because yeah, I think they know in their heart of hearts like, I, I, they're, they're not going like, to get into the yeah, England like, team. I do, I do feel like there's definitely validity to, you know to your point. Your parents are, aren't you? If you're both your parents, are no, 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 no. Like let me let me also yeah, go on, go on. Like, I, I definitely feel like there's validity. Uh, right, to, hold on. Where are you? You want Hang your on, parents? Let, aren't let him speak. My parents, like my parents are Congolese. I'll give you my background, right? So if I was a professional professional football player, this is how I go about it. My parents are Congolese. I was born in Paris. Right. I've lived okay. in London for most of my life. Right. Right? Mm. I support France because that's the first it, yeah. that's the first team that I'm I saw, yeah. right? No, 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 but what I'm saying to you is that if I was a player, I'd probably play for England. And this is why. England would be where I'd learn how to play football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I was good enough, it'd be a variety of things that would play a part in making my decision would be okay, where I'm most likely to find success, where I could play, mm. where I could have a legacy. And ultimately, if I feel like I'm good yeah. enough to play for England, I will play for England. And, and, look, I, and I agree with you. See, on my point of view, I, I'm very, very unfortunate. I've, I've competed and fought for my country. Um, and it was a very easy decision. I was born and bred in England. My parents are English. And it was a very easy... And, and, and all my, my martial arts... I was... One sec, Jay. We'll take the, we'll take the call in a minute. Um, it was very easy for me to pick that country. However, I've got friends who, who were born in England who have Nigerian parents and they support Nigeria like at, fo at football. And I respect that because it's, it's how you feel as an individual. What mm. I also love about my country is that we have people say like Mo Farah who were born abroad they mm. move to this country, mm. but then they have the, what, what you're saying. You know, I think his family and his life was turned around in this country, and out, and obviously he, he got into athletics. It's so almost a level of out of respect for what England and Great Britain has done mm. for him. Mm. That's what I'm going to represent, and I think that that freedom of choice. So I get the callers. That should be something that you exactly. entitled. Yeah. Is exactly. he entitled though? To be, because did he actually get a knighthood? Yeah, but he's yeah. A, but, but he's British. Don't, but hold on, if, if you got a passport, you're British. So hold I mean, on. Was he born here? It doesn't matter. No, he wasn't. Born he wasn't born here. No. And his parents are uh, from, uh, where they, from where they? Somalia. 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 But, but he, yeah. So how, how's, how is it now? I thought you can't get a knighthood if you're not if you're not if you're not born. Oh. No, but you've got to be British. You so have if you've got citizenship or a passport, you're British. You, you're eligible for a knighthood. No, oh, for honest. Right. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah. That's my understanding. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we've got the final call of the night. Oh, is that all? Yeah, it's a quick. These are quick shows, bruv. <laughs> just, like, that's just, like, just like your new manager at Arsenal, nice and quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. nice and quick. A, okay. a great manager who Manchester United wish they would have. My, 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 my mate, my down. My mate, gentlemen, day. gentlemen, gentlemen. Who knows? Gentlemen, hello, hey, welcome. Hello. Well, yeah, hello, welcome to Fan Park Live. What's your name? About, I was calling regarding your question about the Spartans '98 and the West Ham '66 team. West Ham '66. <laughs> that is. What do you want? Ten out. What do you want to say? What is your name? Sorry, let the guy speak. What do you want to say? Sam. Sam. Sam, all right, Sam. Go on, Sam. Crack on. Uh, Rich, I just want to say, you know, I've got some stats for you to prove that England 60... I mean, what England 66 team was uh, the better team. Go for it. Go on. Um, you know, they never conceded a goal all the way into the semi-finals of the competition. Okay. And also, you know, the France team, I think they were the favourites going into the World Cup. So you no, can't they weren't. They really won't. Let, go on, let the guy finish. Go on, go on. Where did you get that from? Where did you, where did you see they were the favourites? Um, no, I just I was around at that time. Okay, so you so you so you haven't got it right then, because as far as I, I know, mean, Brazil no were the favourites. No one backed England for that '66 World Cup. I think Claude can back me up on that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because we're the same age. 
<laughs> no, no, he's probably younger than me. Well, I, the, the, the guy's on to a point here. If you go back and read the history books, yeah, even yeah. though England were the host nations, yeah. they weren't. They weren't. No, no pundits, no news. Nobody was considering them winning it. Although France weren't favourites, Brazil were. Favorites. We know that. Exactly. There, were, there were people out there that thought they could do this with their team. I, I, the, the, the guy's right in his point there. What he's making. Thank you very much for your call. Yeah, thank you. And right. he's, he's, he's West Ham sixty-six points. Okay, funny so the well, point. Sorry. So it'll, just it'll, in, it'll, in response to that, that, number one, there's at least two teams that were favourites. There was at least two teams that were favourites to win it before France. Holland which people don't talk about, that Holland team was re- like ah. outrageously stacked in that year. Yeah, mm-hmm. And Brazil. Yeah. And Goal of people talk about, and people, talk, remember, like France didn't qualify for that. You qualify from, from being host. Yeah. yeah. France weren't even in the World Cup four years prior. Mm-hmm. So we were like, we had great players, but people didn't talk about France being a great international side before that, before that tournament. So, and as much as you want to talk about them not conceding a goal until the semifinals, that's a fantastic achievement in my opinion. Mm. There weren't even half the teams in there. Number one. Yeah. Okay. On on that, what I where where I would say I get that point is that when, when England played in 1966, it was just barring the fact that North Korea were there. You look, you go through the rest of the teams at the tournament. So it's a much smaller tournament, but you basically had Uruguay, France, Spain, Switzerland, Chile. Um, hung, got, Hungary were there when Hungary were a bad that, boy you, team. You've got that. You got that. You got the the, the matches there. But you the, had England facing in a. As they, they so this this was England f- f- throughout, and th- and these teams were good because remember Uruguay in this day and age were winning stuff. So they played Uruguay, they played draw nil nil. N- yeah, drew nil nil with Uruguay. They beat Mexico two nil. Mm. Okay, they beat France two nil. Mm. They then beat Argentina one nil in the quarterfinals. Mm. Portugal with a Sabio two one in the in the semi final, and then Germany four two in the they final. They started facing competitive okay. teams up until the quarterfinals. Is it Argentina in the quarterfinals that you, that you mentioned? Yes. I, I like the fact that you did your research. Also, do your research around the refereeing quality in that in that, uh, in that tournament. We can't That's blame referees. No, no, I don't I'm blame not, referees. I'm not blaming referees. What? But there, there's a there is very there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of writing about the quality of the refereeing in favour of England and against Latin American teams in general. Even I, I brought up the point um, earlier on about Portugal and England in that semi finals. That's when Eusebio was at his peak. Again, nine goals yeah. in one tournament was was insane. Mm. You said we thought this was a fix. It wasn't actually a fix. I actually got it wrong because um, the I don't know if it's the FA that allowed to basically choose where certain ties are being played. So Portugal were playing all the way up in in, in Liverpool at Goodison mm. Park, mm. and England were playing their their games in in Wembley. Oh, yeah. And the the scheduling and the timing of that semi final and how they got Portugal to go down here, as well as the refereeing, like talk about Pele, Pele said listen that tournament he felt like I didn't want to play football afterwards because mm. of how aggressive it, it, it was aggressive on the schedule on the scheduling though because we have got to wrap the show on, on the scheduling yeah. the I, I was looking at this earlier because a few people brought up that the quarterfinals were all played at the same time 3pm on the 23rd of July the semi so all, all teams played at exactly the same time and the semi-finals are three days later at 7.30 so yes they had to travel from Liverpool down but there was exactly the same amount of rest time Exactly the same amount of there was no sort of time difference. It wasn't like they had any less rest That's days. Strange, but I get the point. TV, they, they... Yeah, but the TV, the TV. Basically, was I, it wasn't yeah. so much a schedule. It was more case. It was more case oh, of so Portugal saying, oh. "Well, yours basically." I know it sounds ridiculous considering England were the host nation, but you're playing at Wembley at home, whilst we're playing all the way up here. There's no, there's no neutral. Okay, you're because we don't. But really... where Eng- wherever England would have played, it would never have been neutral because it would have been majority England I mean, fans I mean, there. I mean, Do you get I what I mean? Yeah, I mean. But it... what happened at that World Cup with the stuff you're talking about is that when the Latin American teams were getting knocked out by the European teams, the Latin Americans said that there was a conspiracy. At one point, they said that Germany, a German referee, helped England get through, and the English referee helped Germany get through. As soon as the Latin American teams were knocked out. The European sides then started saying the referees are favouring England. Yeah. It was almost that whole tournament because one team started moaning. It become a knock on of. It sounded like Arsenal fans last year just moaning about well, referees. Like oh, I, I love Chelsea. making oh, no, they him didn't, fight. Did they? They yeah. didn't beat Chelsea, did they? Let's international. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but listen, no. But that, that was, everyone just moaning about referees. But listen, we're going to get the final poll up here. Uh, I'm going to make my decision. I'm going to go with the poll tonight. Some great arguments, great calls tonight, great opinions. France have dominated the polls with 61% of the votes um, on the Arnold Football fan page, but you don't have to agree with it. You don't have to agree with the, with the majority. We've, we've seen in recent elections the majority can win and people still moan. <laughs> but listen, thank you very much for tuning in as ever. Check out History and the 24-7 uh, worth of films, documentaries and all sorts and bits and pieces. Uh, hashtag History of Football. We're back tomorrow night at 10pm. Big one tomorrow night. Muller versus David Villa. It's going to be an epic, epic evening. It really, really is.
Take care. Good night. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you for watching.